Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we're going to do a little disassembly and maintenance on this little guy right here. This is the Spyderco Hanan, Hanan, something or another, uh, flipper by uh, Brad Southern, uh, Southern Knives. So um, this is, well, by Spyderco, but designed by uh, Brad Southern. This is an interesting piece, and I'm, I'm really curious how this is going to go uh, disassembly-wise. Uh, I think it's about an even bet. I'm hoping that they were, uh, that they, they've made it so that you only need to remove the scales on the, uh, on the, what the heck side would this be? The left side? The show side, at the very least. The lock side doesn't make sense with compression. Guys, it's it's going to be a long one. Pardon me, so hang in there. And gals, for that matter. I always say guys, but I intend that as a gender-neutral term. Okay, hey, beautiful, they did it right. So now the bigger question is, can I remove this scale? Or can, do I have to remove this bolster, or can I just pull the scale? We're going to find that out here shortly, but, um, all right. So what I'm going to do here is remove this pivot. What I'm hoping is that when I've removed the pivot as well as these two back scale screws, the, uh, the knife will come apart naturally. There we go, turning this. A little bit of a thread locker on there, but not too bad. I like what they're using in Taiwan. I mean, it, if they over-apply it, it can be a little rough, but otherwise it's, it's pretty solid works well, it's not too aggro, etc. Now my hope is that when I pull this screw in the back there, that's a tiny freaking screw, and this screw here, the knife will come up out of its own volition, and indeed it has, and there we go. So what we can see here pretty immediately, aside from a very fashionable I Am Nick Shabazz t-shirt available at the Shabazar, by the way. Um, sorry couldn't resist. I'm like the one person with the real ethos to wear that, although it amuses me to see other people wearing them too. Oh, cool. Okay. So what we see here are a couple of things that are immediately of interest to us. Um, we see that this is a compression lock knife. I mean, that's pretty damned obvious to anybody, well, ever, um, who's in the knife game, that is, uh, because the lock slides in between the blade and this stop pin here, and uh, basically in order for the knife to close, well, uh, open, so to speak, uh, without pulling this back, I would need to crunch this pin, and that's not going to freaking happen, so there you go. Next thing that you'll see is that this is using the brand new revised Spyderco pivot system for bearings. It's using these thicker phosphor bronze bearing races, um, which is, uh, you know, fine, and it's using thicker steel washers down there, which is also fine. So, um, th th that's very good. I, I appreciate that very much. Um, next thing, we are going to be taking a look at the detent on this knife. Unfortunately, I don't think there's anything we can do about it, but the detent on this knife is very, very soft. Um, th that's sort of been the case from Tai Chung's flippers, uh, forever. Tai Chung, of course, being the Spyderco Tai Chung factory where this, as well as a lot of their other designs, like the Sliver X, have been made. Um, but that's kind of often been an issue for them. Uh, and so, unfortunately, I don't think there's anything we're going to be able to do about it, but we're going to try. And finally, the other thing I'll highlight is that this actually has the uh, concentric stop pin thing going on, where there is a half stop pin on one side here that engages with this inner track, and the, then the biggest stop pin over here, which engages with the other one. So this stop pin, I believe, stops the knife when it's closed. This one provides additional support when the knife is open. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm completely zoomed in here. Whoops. Oops, sorry guys, not a brilliant man. But uh, anyways, nonetheless, what we see here is a, a, a new Spyderco pivot as was debuted on the new Advocate. No, I'm sorry, it was debuted on the um, Sliver Axe, I think, and then featured on the Advocate. But whatever it is, it's a fine system. No complaints there. So um, this is a little, maybe it's just a weird finish from the machining or something. There's a little gunk in there, but that's fine. I've carried this uh, about a day uh, before doing this video disassembly, but maybe there's just some leftover from the factory. I'm sure a knife factory is a gunky place. Whatever. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean the inside of the pivot there. Again, not super dirty. Go ahead and wipe down this steel washer here because that can definitely collect... Duncan, you can see that the bearings have already started to wear a little groove into that. Well, not a groove. Actually, it's just clearing away the surface finish from the looks of it. But whatever it is, that's what a bearing race is meant to do. Um, so that's good. And then I'll clean off the compression lock here. That is the, uh, the, the detent ball, which is on the compression lock bar. Should probably be clear about these kinds of things. And then I will uh, just kind of clean off the bearings themselves. 
The way that I'm going to do that is right here. Pouring some booze onto the cloth and then just kind of running the bearing between my fingers here. That'll spin the balls within their little race. And uh, there we go. Beautiful. We're all set now. We can put this guy back together. Um, I am going to go ahead and use the 85, I'm sorry, the 10-weight nano oil here. Um, 10-weight nano oil is a nice lubricant for uh, the, these kinds of uh, high-speedy sorts of pivots. What I mean by that is that the uh, this knife is a flipper, so it relies on a pretty frictionless action. That's the way I generally will go with that. That said, there are other options. You could use, like, Daewa Real Oil, etc. Works just fine, too. Um, but I'll use the Nano, and I'm going to use a little pen applicator here, which will keep me from using too much of it, or at least will make it a little harder for me, too. The other thing I'm going to do is the... Okay, hold on. Yes. Okay. I'm also going to put a little bit of this uh, lubrication on the detent ball path, which goes right along this surface here, and that will help it ideally unlock a little quicker. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little lubrication on the bearing race here. Set a bearing onto there. Let it spin. Spin, spin, spin. To the best of my knowledge, these cages are symmetrical, so that's not an issue. Put a little of this here, 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 here. Then I'll just put a dab there just in case there is any touch. There shouldn't be any touch, though. So, there you go. Um, let's go ahead and put the bearing down onto that. Did I? No, I didn't lubricate the pivot itself. That's an important step. There we go. All right. Pivot is now lubricated. There we go. My failing to lubricate something is rather out of character. Usually I over-lubricate everything. Speaking of which, put a little on the dent ball, a little there, and I just flipped the Q-tip up. That was cool. Wish I had it on video, but you're going to have to trust me for that one. Now we're going to drop everything back on there after I confirm that there are no parts missing. Stop pin is in. Stop pin is on the other side in. That's good. Both bearings are in. That tends to be helpful for knife reassemblies. I'm going to go ahead as I pinch things together and I'm going to pinch on the compression lock, which will take some of the tension out of the system, let everything lock into place. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and use a little bit of thread locker on the pivot here. And I'm going to use for my thread locker here a uh, little bit of a 85 weight. No, that's not at all the descriptor here. A little bit of blue thread locker on a stick. Take a look at my uh, knife disassembly toolkit video to get more details on what tools I'm using here and why. And we're going to go ahead and I kind of back the screw out a little bit there. Sorry, you probably can't see this, but I'm um, back the screw out a little bit there. And you want to make sure you don't over tighten initially. Don't crank it down too hard, or you run the risk, particularly in the older bearing system, Spideys, but um, run the risk of pinching something in there. I'll go ahead and put a little tiny bit of thread locker on this guy. Don't want to drown these inner screws, because they're not coming out anyways, but still, it's useful. Twist that in. But I, counter, I rotated backwards for a second there, just to make sure I wasn't cross-threading anything. It's always a slight danger here. Pop this into place. You know, I just finished disassembling the little sub-hilt, um, this little guy right here, which has a similar G10 overlay sort of construction, although it's a very, very different knife. Um, and so it's sort of reminiscent. I'm reminiscing memories. Oh, memories of five minutes ago. All right. There we go. Tighten that down. Use a little bit of thread locker on this little guy, just a little tiny, tiny bit here. These are little T6s. There we go. And tighten that in. Freaking beautiful. All right. So now, there is substantial blade play. So I need to tighten this blade, or I need to tighten the pivot much more. And let's do that. Tighten. Okay. There is now zero blade play. Smooth. Absolutely smooth. Absolutely a little bit of a pinch on the finger there. I think this is sort of a, you have to kind of light switch now, because even then I end up landing there and getting a little pinch on the compression lock. Eh. Hopefully I'll find a way to do that more comfortably as I carry this guy. But worst case scenario, it's not a huge deal. Yeah, there we go. And we are uh, nicely done. How's the detent? 
I feel like it's actually running a little better than it used to. That could just be a little bit of lubrication as the factor here. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Either way, it's working. No problems. So, um, there we go. That was the disassembly and maintenance on this little guy, the uh, Spyderco Brad Southern Hanan, Hanan, whatever the heck it is. And uh, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.